Welcome to section 14.2. All right, gentle people, what we're going to do in these next few sections is invoke a new type of theory. And this is going to be MO theory or molecular orbital theory. So what I want you guys to do is take Vesper, Lewis dot structure, hybridization, put all of those theories on the back burner. We're going to start from scratch to describe how molecules are formed and the interaction of those molecules. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new type of orbital, and these are going to be molecular orbitals. They are going to exist when I put atoms together to form a molecule. Now, to make these molecular orbitals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct them from atomic orbitals. And so what people like to say is that we're going to take the linear combination of atomic orbitals or LCAOs. What that is, is just a fancy way to describe what we're doing. What we're going to do is take the waves that describe our atomic orbitals and put them together. We are going to start mixing waves. Now, when we go ahead and do this, what we're going to generate are molecular orbitals, and we're going to characterize these molecular orbitals as bonding orbitals or anti-bonding orbitals. A bonding orbital is going to be one where a lot of the electron density is between the two nuclei. So what I'm saying is that the probability is super high to find electrons between the nucleus, i.e. a bond. Now an anti-bond is going to be the exact opposite. What I'm going to see is that there's going to be very low or no probability to find the electron between the two nucleuses. So this is the antithesis of a bond. So what I'm going to show you guys is how we're going to generate these pictures. So what I'm going to show you is how we're going to take these atomic orbitals, combine them to form molecular orbitals. So let's go ahead and say that I want to create the H2 molecule. Now the H2 molecule are is made out of two hydrogen atoms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my two hydrogen atoms. Each one of my hydrogen atoms is going to have one electron in the 1s. So here's what I can do. So let's look at the two atomic orbitals of hydrogen. So I'm going to say that these are the 1s orbitals, and to simplify matters, remember, this is described by a wave. So I'm going to put two waves here to describe that orbital. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these two waves together and mix them. Now in this first case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix them in phase. What I mean by that is when one crests, the other crests, when one trough, the other is going to trough. So the waves are in phase with each other. Now remember, when you have waves in phase with each other, they are going to constructively interfere with each other. That means they are going to enhance each other. So what's going to happen is I'm going to mix these two orbitals together, and I'm going to generate a new orbital. And in that new orbital, I'm going to have an increased probability to have electrons between the two nucleus. And so if I have this increased probability because those waves are enhancing each other, that means that I'll likely find the electrons between the two nucleuses. Or in other words, this is considered a bonding orbital. Now there's another way that I could have combined this. Let's go ahead and say that I have these 1s orbitals and I bring these 1s orbitals together, but this time I have my waves out of phase. So when one goes up, the other goes down. Now if I try to mix the waves such that they are out of phase, what you guys will see is that they will destructively interfere with each other. That means that they are going to cancel each other out. If they cancel each other out, that means that I'm not going to find probability of the electron between the two nucleuses. The new molecular orbital looks something like this. 
where I can find the electron on either side of the molecule, but not in between the two nucleuses. So again, let's remember what we're trying to do here. We're taking two atomic orbitals and we're combining them to make molecular orbitals. I can do it constructively here on the bottom, or I can do it destructively, which is shown here on the top. Now these are going to be my molecular orbitals that I generate, and they come from my atomic orbitals. And that's the picture you guys see in your book and on this slide. I get a bonding orbital where there is electron density between my nucleus, and I get the antibonding molecular orbital where there is no probability or no electron density between the two nucleuses. Now, I want to warn you guys, your book, they didn't use the shaded and different colors that I did. They use the plus and minus sign. The plus and minus are telling you the phase of the wave. And so it is telling you if they are going to be in phase or out of phase. So you can see the plus and the minus here are out of phase waves coming together. Just be careful that you realize that this doesn't represent charge. Remember, these molecular orbitals represent electrons, and electrons are always negatively charged. So now that I've got my bonding and antibonding orbital, we can start laying down the energies of these orbitals. So what I want to show you guys is how to generate this picture right here. And this picture is generated by the combination of our atomic orbitals forming those molecular orbitals. So again, we're going to make the H2 molecule. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a three panel picture. So the three parts to my picture is going to be the atoms are going to be on the outside and the molecule is going to be on the inside of my picture. So the first picture in my three picture drawing is going to be the hydrogen atom. Now the hydrogen atom has a 1s orbital with one electron on it. Now the second part to my picture is going to be the other hydrogen atom. And it is the same picture. It's going to have a 1s orbital with one electron in that orbital. The middle is going to represent the H2 molecule. Now the H2 molecule has molecular orbitals. These molecular orbitals are formed from the atomic orbitals of hydrogen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these atomic orbitals of hydrogen and I'm going to combine them. I'm going to mix them constructively and I'm going to mix them destructively. Now what you'll see is I drew one of these molecular orbitals below my 1s orbitals and I drew one of these molecular orbitals above my 1s orbitals. And that's because we're trying to relate the energy of our system. So going back to this picture, if I do this molecular orbital where I have constructive interference, I'm putting all the electrons between the two nucleuses. This is a much favorable interaction than if they were apart. Now these electrons get to experience both nuclei. So this is going to lower the energy of my system. And that's why I put the bonding orbital below my atomic orbitals. Now, if we look at the antibonding orbital, what you guys will see is I'm restricting where my electrons are. They can be on either side of my molecule. And so they have much less space and they experience the nucleus much less. If they're experiencing the nucleus much less, that means that the energy of the antibonding orbital is going to be higher than my atomic orbitals. And that's why you saw me draw that energy above. Now, the other thing that we have to consider is the symmetry of these orbitals. What I want to describe is if it is symmetric with the bonding axis i.e. is it a sigma orbital or is it a pi type orbital? So remember my nucleus is right here. So this is my bonding axis. And if I rotate this orbital around the bonding axis, 
what you can see is this is symmetrical with the bonding axis. So this has sigma symmetry. The same thing is true with the anti-bonding orbital. Here is my nucleus. Here is my bonding axis. If I rotate around the bonding axis, you can see it's symmetrical. So this is sigma in symmetry. So going back to this three panel picture, I'm going to go ahead and start labeling my molecular orbitals. I'm going to say that this orbital has sigma symmetry and was constructed from 1s orbitals. I'm going to also say that this is sigma in symmetry and is constructed from 1s orbitals. Now, I should note that this top one is an anti-bonding orbital. So if it's an anti-bonding orbital, I'm going to label each anti-bonding orbital with an asterisk or a star. So the bottom one is sigma 1s. The top one is sigma star 1s. Now, there's one more thing we have to do to complete our three panel picture. And that is we have to fill electrons in to our three panel picture. Now you are going to fill molecular orbitals the same way you fill atomic orbitals. You're going to follow the three rules. Alfbaus principle, fill the lowest first and work your way up. Pauli's exclusion principle, only two electrons per orbital. Hun's rule, if there are degeneracy, make sure you fill each degenerate orbital before you start pairing them up. So going back to the three panel picture, let's remember what happened. We took these two atomic orbitals, we mixed them together. So these two atomic orbitals don't exist anymore. What I have are these molecular orbitals in the middle. Now I have two electrons that came with these hydrogen atoms. So now these two electrons have to go into these newly constructed molecular orbitals. So I'm going to follow my rules. I'm going to go ahead and put one electron, two electrons, and that is going to be how I fill my molecular orbitals, following those three rules. If I were to do an electron configuration, what I would say is that for hydrogen, I have a sigma orbital that's bonding, and it is made from the 1s orbitals. And there are two electrons in the sigma 1s orbital. So this completes our three panel picture. I have the hydrogen atoms on the sides, and in the middle, this here represents what's happening in the molecule. I took the two things on the end and made it and combined it to look like the thing in the middle. Now there's one other thing that we can go ahead and do, and that's to go ahead and calculate the bond order based on our molecular orbital diagram. To do this, we are gonna follow this formula. So this is just a matter of bookkeeping. I'm gonna take the number of bonding electrons minus the number of anti-bonding electrons divided by two. Now again, this equation was so that we can relate it to Lewis dot structures and other theories that we've talked about in the past. So if I look at this picture and I wanted to calculate bond order, the number of bonding electrons is two. The number of anti-bonding electrons, well, I have none of them. So I'm gonna say minus zero. I'm gonna divide this by two because that's what the equation says. And once I crank out the math, I get a bond order of one. Now this is saying that there is a single bond between hydrogen and hydrogen. Now that was a lot of work compared to what we did to get the Lewis dot structure of this. But now I'm gonna show you why molecular orbital is a more powerful theory and how it explains some of the things that Lewis dot structure and hybridization and Vesper can't do. So why don't you guys do me a favor and go ahead and tackle this quiz question. All right, let's go ahead and do our three panel picture. So I have the helium atom on one side and the helium atom has a 1s orbital with two electrons in it. 
I'm going to combine that with another helium atom. And this helium is the same. It has a 1s orbital with two electrons in that 1s orbital. I'm going to combine them to make the molecule He2. I'm going to take my atomic orbitals and I'm going to put them constructively together and I'm going to combine them destructively together. This is going to be sigma 1s and this is going to be sigma star 1s. So I no longer have these atomic orbitals on the side. I have combined them to make the molecular orbitals in the middle. So I'm going to put all the electrons in that center diagram. So there are four electrons, one, two, three, and four. Now I can go ahead and calculate bond order. So the bond order is the number of bonding electrons. So two of them. Subtract the number of antibonding electrons, two of them and divide this by two. And what I get here is a bond order of zero. Now, if you get something that is a bond order of zero, that means that these two atoms have no affinity for each other. There is no propensity for them to make that molecule, which means if you get a bond order of zero, this molecule is predicted not to exist. So not only can we answer this question about this molecule having a bond order of zero, it tells us a little more about this molecule. Now, if you were to try to draw this Lewis dot structure, you would have a hard time and you would say to yourself that H2 does not exist. You couldn't draw the Lewis dot structure, so you probably couldn't make this molecule. So that bond order of zero tells us this molecule doesn't exist. But let's go ahead and test something real quick. Let's go ahead and ask ourselves, what happens if I make He plus? So I take that molecule and I add a positive charge to it. Does this molecule exist? So why don't you guys go ahead and try this out, figure out what the bond order is, and when you're done, mark the right answer on to your quiz question. All right, gentle people, here's the diagram that I helped you draw in the last quiz question. In that last question, I was just looking for HE2. So in this one, I'm asking about HE2+. So instead of the four electrons, if I put a positive charge, that means my molecule has three electrons. So one, two, Three. Now, it doesn't matter where I lost the electron. You could have thought of me putting the molecule together, then removing the electron, or you could have thought of me starting with an He plus and combining it with an He. But let's get to the meat of our example. Let's go ahead and calculate the bond order to this. So the number of bonding electrons is two. The number of antibonding electrons is one and I'm going to divide this by two. This gets me a bond order of one half. So what that means is that He can have half a bond between He so long as this is a one plus molecule. And this is something that we actually see experimentally. We can make the He2 plus cation experimentally. And this is the benefit of molecular orbital theory. This molecule cannot be drawn as a Lewis dot structure. Molecular orbital theory says that if I put a positive charge on this molecule, then the molecule can exist and it has this weak interaction that's less than a full bond. Now, there are other things MO theory tells us that are not predicted by the other theories that we talked about, and we're going to get to that in some of these future lectures. But I hope this lecture made sense, and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.